the simulation has left investigators with urgent new questions. Why did they start that turn so late? Fyth also needs to know why the crew didn't abandon an approach that was so clearly going wrong. It was kind of surprising for all of us that you had been maneuvering an airplane of that size, that low to the ground. The cockpit voice recording is finally ready. It's Fyth's last hope for solving the mystery. Investigators get a breakthrough when they listen to the recording. Okay, let's get started. We didn't hold a lot of hope out for getting good information from the flight crew. That's why the cockpit voice recorder became so important to us, because it could fill in the gaps. And what it reveals is extraordinary. Connie 808, you're required to remain within the airspace designated by strobe light. Roger, we'll look for the strobe light, Connie 808. Fife hears the air traffic controller discussing a strobe light with the crew of Flight 808. So what do we know about the strobe they keep talking about? They study a navigational chart for Guantanamo Airport. There it is. They learned that a strobe light marks the base's border fence with Cuba. On the approach to runway 10, there are certain visual cues that the crew would use in order to get themselves lined up so that they wouldn't overfly the restricted airspace. One of those cues was a uh, high intensity strobe light that was mounted along the border fence. Are they giving us 2 8? Yeah, if it's available. Investigators hear the crew talking about using the easier runway, 28, for the landing. They had initially lined up for 28, and that was to be their landing runway. So why did they switch to 10? How to make that 1-0 approach? Just for the heck of it and see how it is. If we miss it, we'll just come back around and land on 28. OK. Stop the tape. For the heck of it? That's why he's landing on runway 10? Fyth is struck by the captain's decision to use runway 10. When there was a comment by the captain going, why don't we just try runway 10 just for, I think, the heck of it, you know? I mean, you don't just do things for the heck of it in an airplane of that size. I think that caught us by surprise. Investigators learned that neither pilot had ever landed a DC-8 at Guantanamo. They wonder if the captain knew that runway 10 was a more challenging approach than runway 28. They study the airline's procedures. They had to watch a video. That's it. Because of the difficulty landing at Guantanamo, military pilots require special training to land on runway 10. But AIA only required its civilian pilots to watch a short video. Exercise extreme caution when landing on runway 10. Records show the captain and first officer had both watched the training video within the past year. Align your base leg just to the right of the strobe beacon. This beacon identifies the U.S.-Cuban boundary beginning at the shoreline. Landing on runway 10 was very unique. That's why the airport was classified as a special use airport, because it takes specialized training. Let's keep going. Investigators now know why the crew chose runway 10. But why didn't they abandon their disastrous approach? There's the airport straight ahead. Huh? Fyth learns that as Flight 808 approaches Guantanamo, Captain Chapo is finding it difficult to get a visual fix on the airport. 